call to order the count, committee of the whole meeting in North Aurora Village on Monday, December 21st, 2020. Roll call. Trustee Carroll? Here. Trustee Curtis? Here. Trustee Gaffino? Here. Trustee Gately? Here. Trustee Lowry? Here. Trustee Martinez? Here. And Mayor Berman? Here. Uh, any audience comments? I do not see any Mayor Berman. Trustee comments? Item number one in the discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item number one under discussion is going to be a Tifasad grant uh, program uh, rebate request. And Mr. Culp is going to take us through that. Yeah, as you know, the uh, North Road Tax Amendment Financing Grant Program provides a 50% match up to $20,000 for properties within TIF under the TIF guidelines. Uh, Sharon Carriage is located at 12 John Street, is seeking a TIF aside grant program in the amount of $12,216 uh, for a project that would is in total cost in $24,432 uh, for an entryway, a covered entryway or canopies as part of uh, entryway and, and uh, facade improvements on their north um, building facade. They've since got a building permit. They've su they submitted the two proper bids. Uh, just looking for any feedback from the village board. Looks good. Yeah, we're good to go. Huh. Yeah, I'm in agreement with it. It's nice to see our businesses along here taking advantage of this. Right. Yes. You know, especially during these times, everybody's thoughts are on someplace else, not necessarily improving the business. So very good. Item number two. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item number two on the agenda is a special use request for 307 Banbury Road, which is currently Chapel Street Church. Uh, Mr. Tilt is going to take us through it, but the reason they're in front of the board tonight is they require special use approval as they're looking for an expansion and thus an intensification of the use, which requires a special use. Yeah, very quickly, um, Chapel Street 307 Banbury is um, looking to add 3,000 square feet and renovate their 5,000 square feet of existing space uh, from the former Cornerstone Church. Um, they have the right to conduct the business in their current facility as a place of worship, as you know. Um, the expansion of the facility constitutes more than 25% of the, of the ground floor area of the existing facility, so therefore triggering the um, site plan approval process. And also, too, being that a place of worship is a special use, the expansion of which is going to require a special use in of itself. So the two items we had motions on from the plan commission for unanimous approval were the special use for the expansion of the place of worship and the site plan approval. Um, there was one condition added to the, the approval was that one shade tree shall be provided at the north and south end of the easternmost parking aisle. Um, we did have two members of the public uh, log on to the meeting. They just had questions relative to the um, screening of the HVAC, which was proposed in the north end of the building, and then the location of the parking. Um, and both questions were satisfied, uh, both by the village and the petitioner. So at this point in time, I want to go ahead and um, introduce uh, Patty Bernard, who is going to uh, walk through a presentation regarding the um, petition tonight. Good evening. Uh, my name is Patty Bernhardt. I'm with Rosanova and Whitaker. And uh, with me tonight, I also have um, Abe Donso, who is the Executive Director of Operations for Chapel Street Church, and Marcos Rodriguez, who is the Project Engineer with Aspen Group. Um, can you turn it to slide two, please? Thank you. Um, the location of the property is 307 Banbury Road. It is across the street from the Schneider Elementary School, if that sort of helps you out. Um, it has Chestnut uh, Street on the south, and Hickory is on the east. Flagstone Street is on the north. Um, the property is currently zoned R1 single family residential. Um, under the comp plan, it is... Um, uh, has a designation of public and semi-public use. 
Uh, it is 2.19 acres. You can see it on the aerial here. Um, uh, it's kind of an irregularly shaped lot. The um, church, the existing church uh, is on the uh, west side. Um, the uh, area that you see that is sort of grayed out is kind of like a, a large basketball court. And that's kind of the area that they're looking to expand into. And then you can see um, there's parking that surrounds it. The other thing of note that you can see, oops, is um, that there are some fairly mature uh, trees that also surround um, the parcel on uh, the residential lots in the area. Um, a little bit of the history, oh, the no. church, I'm sorry. The church was um, donated by Cornerstone Church, uh, but it is uh, too small for uh, my client's ministry. Um, and this is also their fourth uh, location. Can you turn it to slide three, please? Um, this is the existing uh, church, uh, and it is currently um, approximately 6,000 square feet. Um, it is a permitted use as a place of worship, um, and as uh, Mr. Tote stated, we are seeking a special use for the expansion of that use. Um, we're also seeking site plan approval because we are looking to um, uh, put an addition on that is greater than 25%. Um, the existing building, as I stated, is um, 6,090 square feet. And um, the, my client is looking to renov renovate about 5,000 square feet of the, the interior of the church. Um, there's parking currently uh, located on the lot, and there are 60 spaces, which is um, actually, I think there's 61 spaces. 60 spaces are required uh, because they have a 237 seat sanctuary. Um, and for every four seats, uh, one space is required. Um, so 61 spaces, there is enough parking, but with the um, addition, we are um, actually going to be adding some parking as well um, and to the tune of having 70 spaces instead of the 60 required. Um, there's going to be new construction um, of 3,100 square feet. Um, can you change it to the next slide for me, please? Uh, you can see here the existing building is um, on the uh, the west side of the property, and they're looking to construct the addition, which is approximately 3,100 square feet on the east side of the property. This sort of grayed out area that you can see that runs all the way over to the parking lot right now is currently a basketball court. So what, the, uh, what they're looking to do is to um, use a lot of that basketball court space for the um, area for the addition there will be a grassy area here, and then this will be parking. The, the dark gray area is going to be parking. Um, the uh, addition, it will be immediately adjacent. It will be um, approximately the same height, um, no higher than the existing building. Um, and as I stated, they're using a large part of that basketball court, so there will be a very, very small increase in impervious surface here. Um, approximately 1% on the increase in impervious surface. Um, the uh, basketball court that was existing will also help with uh, those additional parking spaces that I mentioned that they'll be able to fill in. This used to be a basketball court, this dark gray area, and that is going to uh, be the additional, uh, some of the additional parking. Um, can you turn it to the next slide, please? Uh, the next slide shows the, uh, the renovation that is going to be done on the interior of the building. Um, the worship space um, will be uh, increased um, to a size of 237 seat sanctuary. The lobby area is um, going to be improved uh, to include a coffee bar, um, some family, uh, uh, family room area, uh, some additional office space and some restrooms. Um, and that's gonna be the renovation for the interior. 
uh, of the existing building. Um, the new construction um, you can see is over on the right side of the screen. And that new construction is going to have youth ministry classrooms, um, not daycare, uh, as someone had previously asked. Um, it's youth ministry uh, for the church. Um, you can see that there will be a kids check-in area. There are some flex classroom areas. There's a nursery, preschool, and then a kids space um, uh, for worship as well. And additionally, some storage, which of course everybody always needs that, that additional storage. If you can go to the next slide, please. Um, the next slide shows the exterior elevations. Um, you can see the, uh, the south elevation, um, which is the front of the church, um, will, uh, is going to be very similar to the existing uh, church that's there. They're going to use the same brick, the same roof, um, use the same type of windows, the same doorways, that type of thing. Uh, they will try to match the existing uh, church as much as possible. And can you go to the next slide? Okay, and the next slide is just basically our, our, our final slide. We um, are very thankful for the plan commission's unanimous approval. Um, we do agree to those additional trees that they have asked for. Um, we are working with uh, Schneider School across the way. There's always been an agreement in place, I believe, between uh, Cornerstone Church and the school in order to assist each other when um, there was overflow parking needs. So we are going to work with them uh, additionally in order to try to get that parking agreement in place. Um, my clients, you know, will probably have three to five employees, hours Monday through Thursday, nine to four, and then on Sunday from nine until noon, those are the anticipated hours. Um, and we're here, um, my team, to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. I think it looks great. I think it's gonna be a great addition to the neighborhood. Yeah, I think it looks fine. I'm fine with it. Yeah. I'm good. Hey, Mike, I, Mike Toth had a, a question. What was a parking concern the neighbors had or you said it was answered, What what was that? I think some of the, I think the resident that logged on um, had asked, had assumed that the parking lot would be expanded further to the east. Um, we just corrected him saying that the existing parking uh, would not go any further than the east than what's, pre, what's currently there right now. Uh, any spaces would be added, uh, you know, along the line between the existing building, the addition and the existing parking space. Was there any additional landscape to screen the parking or anything or not we required? Had the, or? The, con the condition of approval was one that staff put in. There was additional shade trees at the terminus of the aisle, the drive aisle, which is the easternmost, which uh -huh. is shown here in the, on the, I can't really point to it right now, but uh, just additional shade trees um, in the area right now where there aren't any. Yeah, my only concern is I've been at a few houses on uh, Hickory Street and, you know, it's, um, yeah, you can see, you know, you got kind of the mixed use there with the uh, parking and homes and families and things. Um, uh, what was the other question too, regarding the roof, uh, yeah, AC or the HVAC? No, there are some HVAC units um, that are proposed on the north end of the addition area. And um, someone had asked if those were rescreened, uh, which they will be. Mm -hmm. I don't believe the, 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 the zoning warrants I don't believe speaks to required screening in residential districts. It does for industrial mm -hmm. business. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, matter of fact, they're, they are screened. Will there be any noise issue between that and the homes just to the northeast of it, you think? Well, With, the, uh, as, far as, the, as far as the air conditioner and stuff running and things? Well, the actual plan itself, it, um, it exceeds the required setback of, of 10 feet. Uh, mm -hmm. you're, showing, you're showing basically 25 feet to the property line. Um, and in that area too, there might be some trees in the, around the existing property. So you have a setback that's double uh, what is required by code for that area. Okay, that's all I had. Uh, it's actually in the landscape plan, Dave, if there is, I forget which slide it is. Any other, any other I'm really happy to see the growth and some of this uh, worship facilities in the 
I think it's something needed, you know, for the youth, especially especially in uh, more in these times. I I really like that. Well, again, history. The church was larger before there was a fire, so it's uh, it's coming back to its uh, more original size. Yeah, I believe in 2006 it burnt down, and that's the existing foundation that you see is the basketball court. I believe that's the old church site. Well, I'm happy to see it getting back to where it used to be. Any other discussion? Thank you for your presentation. Uh, item number. Item number uh, three, see. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item number three, very similar to the last item, is coming back to the board. It's an expansion uh, of an intensification of use. So basically, Verilife is looking to expand the current uh, medical and adult marijuana dispensary in town. And because the use hasn't changed, but the size is changing, it's triggering the special use process from the board. Uh, with that, Mike Coates is gonna go further into their application. Yeah, I think Steve hit on the important parts. Um, in December of 2019, the Village Board approved the special use for Pharmacan to allow for the adult uh, use cannabis dispensing organization on the subject property. Um, as of right now, they're looking to expand the adjacent space uh, to basically fulfill their existing demand, um, which would give them a total square footage of 3,578 square feet. Um, and then basically, again, they have the right to conduct the business in that building as a, um, as a special use for their current special use. Um, it's just the fact that the expansion necessitates the additional special use because um, they're basically doubling size at that point. Uh, again, the plan commission did review this petition um, on December 1st via public hearing. Um, the plan commission did unanimously recommend approval of the petition. There were three conditions that were added at that point in time, or actually added by staff originally and concurred with the plan commission. Uh, that was that the dumpster enclosure shall be gated on the fourth or south side. Uh, there are dumpster enclosures on the property, but the south side of the enclosures are not gated, uh, which is required for code. Um, number two condition is basically just a refuge should not be accumulating on site or above the enclosure. Uh, this is just a general code requirement that we want to codify in this ordinance. Um, and item number three is that the owner shall regularly monitor all on-site parking conditions to ensure adequate parking for all businesses, tenants at all times. Uh, if you recall, January 1 of this year, um, leading into the preceding weeks and probably a couple months, uh, there was high demand for the product there and there was a high, uh, high volume of traffic. And they did have on-site uh, temporary um, traffic control, um, which was effective, but no longer needed at this point. But they, we do ask they still effectively monitor the property and making sure that all the tenants have adequate parking and for their parking needs. Uh, there were no public comments at the plan commission meeting uh, rather just the plan commission asking the petitioner of some of the logistics of the expansion and, and the use. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Katrina McGuire, a uh, legal representation for Pharmacan to go over through the brief presentation. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Uh, Great. Um, hello, everybody. This is Katrina McGuire from Thompson Coburn on behalf of Pharmacan. It's nice to see everybody again. We were approved, as Mike mentioned, about a year ago uh, for the establishment of the adult use dispensary at this location. Um, I'm here this evening with Bill McMenemy, and I'm going to turn it over to him to talk about the details. But essentially, as Mike mentioned, we are looking to expand within the existing building, essentially doubling our space um, in order to uh, better serve our customers and operate a little more effectively out of that location. Bill, do you wanna go ahead? Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and, and uh, trustees for taking the time out to uh, hear Pharmacan this evening. As uh, Mike told, uh, pointed out, we, we are looking to expand uh, within our existing uh, location. And first and foremost, that would give us the opportunity to uh, serve our patients and customers, our existing patients and customers uh, accurately um, and effectively, uh, but more importantly, um, help uh, our operation as we expand into uh, the adjacent space. Uh, we've made a tremendous improvement since, since January 1st, um, since the legalization of, of cannabis, and we've added technology uh, to help aid uh, in that patient and, and customer experience. And first and foremost, uh, I wanna just kind of highlight how we're doing that. 
and that's through our online prop platform, so e-commerce. So very similar to shopping on, on Amazon or if you uh, use Starbucks mobile order uh, app, uh, we've introduced since January 1st on and around uh, the middle of March, uh, our online reservation and e-commerce platform. And we require that of all of our medical and uh, recreational customers who come into uh, our dispensary at, at North Aurora. And it's real simple. Uh, you make your selections uh, at home uh, when it's convenient for you or perhaps when you're <clears throat> at work um, and you make your selections uh, and then you simply reserve a time to come down to the dispensary. And uh, you still cannot pay for your product uh, online. That transaction needs to happen uh, within the dispensary. And if I could ask you to advance the slide, we've also uh, uh, added uh, our online, our digital payment app. And this allows our customers to um, download a personal QR code, uh, which they, uh, prior to coming to the dispensary, um, they load their banking information, uh, debit card checking account information uh, online, and that gives them their own personal QR code. And they can bring that into the dispensary uh, to complete their, their purchase, uh, again, after making their reservation. And then if you could advance the slide uh, one more time for us, please. And this is kind of the overview of how the expanded um, dispensary will look. Uh, for the most part, uh, I'll just draw your attention to the right. Um, we are putting in place a uh, secure product storage, which is our vault. We're expanding that. And you'll see there the, the processing of the online order. So we're uh, increasing our capability um, as an e-commerce provider uh, of cannabis to process those orders effectively and efficiently. We're also creating a, a proper uh, break room and work room for our team members uh, to, to, to rest in, have their lunch, socialize in a you know, post-COVID uh, environment. And then of course, adding a proper general manager's office. I'm directing you over to the left side of the page. Uh, for those of you who have been within the dispensary, the dispensing floor, the dispensing floor is a uh, very tight, it's a very tight space, uh, how it is now and it's shaped like an L with roughly five uh, POSs. And we're repurposing the space and we're expanding the POS to 10. Uh, and that allows us to properly service our patients and customers, um, but be incredibly efficient in combination with our uh, reservation system and our digital payment app um, it allows us to turn the customers over if they use that methodology in about a minute and a half uh, to two minutes. And just the experience is just so much better for the customer patient. And ultimately, as you've seen since April of uh, the community uh, at large. So it's really just about right-sizing the uh, existing dispensing floor, setting it up properly. Um, so that way we can have an efficient and effective uh, patient and consumer experience. I appreciate you taking time to listen. Uh, to our presentation. And if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Good. Is the, uh, is the area to the left, is that what is, is, is exist at this moment? It and, does. It does. That's the, a great question. The area to the right is your expansion. It is. So we're bumping out into the expansion area, but the area to the left is very much as it looks currently today with the exception of how we would lay out those point of sales. Uh, we would change those a little bit, you know, to be a straight line instead of the L. Um, and then uh, it'll just allows us to have a much, a much more uh, cohesive experience within the dispensing sales floor. I'm fine with it. I think it's a good idea. looks good. I like the design. I have a question for staff. Um, have we gotten any more complaints from the uh, adjacent tenants in that building? I mean, have, have most of the issues been resolved regarding, you know, lines and parking, trash? Yeah, yeah we have We have not. Uh, in fact, too, I think we asked uh, uh, Chief Fisher today if they've had any issues or calls there. And I don't I think it's just, uh, so shares the same sentiment. It's been pretty quiet. Obviously, obviously, there was a lot of demanding at the beginning of the year. The beginning of the year was very trying, but uh, it had since kind of quieted off as the year went on and other dispensaries opened. Well, my, my concern is, you know, it, um, 
when they expand and COVID ends, are, are we going to go right back to that? Are we going to, I just want to, you know, make sure that we're putting safeguards in place so that we we're, we're being respectful of the adjacent business owners. That's a, that's a great challenge, uh, Trustee Curtis, and I appreciate you asking. And so, uh, believe it or not, uh, our transaction volume has remained very similar to what it has on January 1st or the first month, the first month of, of uh, legalization. And we've gotten, in, as I mentioned, uh, we've learned. We've gotten better. We've taken, took, we've accepted the feedback uh, from our, our tenants, uh, you know, our partners there uh, at the site, as well as the community, and made the requisite improvements to um, be incredibly efficient at processing uh, transactions. Uh, I will tell you that wherever we operate in Illinois and Massachusetts um, in adult cannabis, uh, we have the very, very similar result. Um, the, the amount of lines that we have have gone down dramatically um, and how we how we operate is infinitely more efficient than it has been in the past. Yes, there have been more dispensaries that have opened, but in total, uh, our average transactions, the total of our average transactions has remained uh, very similar. We, we've just gotten much better at operating our business and hopefully um, the complaints or lack of complaints that you're hearing are reflecting a reflection of the effort that we've put in and we'll continue to get better um, each and every day. Uh, we just want to be a good, a good neighbor in the, uh, in the community um, and we're continuing to improve. Thank you. I, like I really add, appreciate um, that. <laughs> I really appreciate that being a good neighbor with the community and making an effort to streamline the operation. So perhaps it, it costs us a, uh, um, this moves out the impact uh, causes in that area. And uh, I'm glad to hear everything is going well. Thank, thank you for that input. My only comment is the recommendations from um, the plan commission, those three items. Uh, Mike, has that have been a problem the last nine months? Um, I'm assuming some issue or went beyond here, I suppose. But um, I remember we had that issue first three months and with potholes in a parking lot. I know it's not really related. It's the landlord versus um, the business inside, but has any of that been remedied or and what putting this in here, how are we going to monitor it more? Or what's, what's the angle on that? Wood has um, the, the dumpster enclosure was added for the original condition of approval. The potholes have been filled again. Those conditions would still apply uh, to the existing uh, use. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, the, the gates were not put up, which is why it was added now. Um, okay. as, um, and again, the, just, just, a, just a general statement of monitoring traffic. I've, I've driven through the site you know, several times just to yeah. get a sense you know, when this petition came about. I have a lot of open parking spaces. I've not mm -hmm. seen any issues. Um, and I don't know if the petitioner can speak to this, but I think medical patients have the ability to park up. I don't know if they still have the ability to park up front. So between their online applications and their ordering, I think they've got their, their logistics down to a point where they can get move people in and out of the site pretty quick. Mr. So Rex, the medical patients can still park uh, up top. Um, and we ask that the recreational patients park in the back. I think Mr. Toth, you noted uh, in our last meeting, we've also made improvements to um, our on-site security uh, who are very much customer focused, patient focused. Uh, to help direct traffic at the site as well. Do you anticipate additional employees when you're adding extra point of sale? So will you have more required parking? No, no, our employees are, are fairly static. Uh, we, we have more employees in the current site than we do have POSs that we can open and operate. And so it would just be repurposing our labor uh, to, meet, to meet the current need that we can't we can't meet in the existing space with the existing uh, layout that we have. So no, no additional employees. I, I find it ironic that the two special uses on our cow were one, the expansion of a church and the other, the expansion of legalized <laughs> marijuana in the village. Uh, <laughs> so back to question three, I didn't get finished there, but um, so you expect the property owner to monitor on-site parking conditions, ensure adequate parking. What, what, what kind of teeth is in that and who's that affecting? The farm mechanic or how's that work, Mike? Well, the property owner owns a property. 
he's responsible yeah. for his tenants activities. So what's going to happen is by this, we just have something to fall back on in the event that you know, there is traffic on site um, or if there's any other parking issues or, or, or complaints from tenants. Uh, but again, that was an issue that came up originally. You know, you had oh, right. biz- businesses in there that couldn't park uh, because their employees couldn't park on site. And that has not been the case in several months that we're aware of. Uh, but this is just a general statement that they just continue to monitor all spaces on site because there are several tenants in this property. Right. Do they do that or have they been doing it? Well, they don't have a, they don't have a third party. I don't believe anymore. Um, monitoring parking. I don't know if it's been necessary, uh, but why that's why we're, that's why as of right now, we're putting on the property owner, not the business tenant. Yeah. Cause it's back when this all started, I remember several of that one that was an insurance person came in and said the place smelled bad and, uh, no parking and all that. So, you know, as far as respecting neighbors as well as uh, other businesses there. So, all right, thank you. Any other discussion? I think it looks good. You got the feeling? Yep, that looks good. Yes. All right, moving on. I remember. Well, let's see. We're done with our discussions, right? Yes. We need a motion to go to executive session to review executive session minutes dated 10-5-2020 and review a release of executive session minutes. Do I have a motion to move to executive session? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, we're going to executive session. Everybody, goodbye. Thank hey, you. Um, happy, um, holidays. Uh, happy holidays. Happy I holidays. I want to say to everyone. Thank you. Happy holidays.